My name is Laura Boyle and I'm based in Chagas Moor Park and I'm going to talk today about the relationship between pig health and pig welfare. And I suppose for a lot of people these two things are seen as one and the same thing. But what I'm trying to emphasise through my talk is that there's a lot more to pig welfare than just good physical health, although good physical health is a very important part of pig welfare obviously. But it also involves mental and physical comfort. And a lot of the results from at least three projects that we're running in Chagas Moor Park at the moment are all yielding very interesting data about this relationship. So for example, we would have commonly expected that pigs that have um, tail damage from tail biting have poor welfare. But when we look at different flows of pigs on the farm, it's, the fast, it's sometimes the fast growing thriving pigs that have higher levels of tail lesions. So they're physically well, but they seem to be performing more tail biting. And then in pens of where there's more sick pigs or struggling pigs, there's much less tail damage. So it seems that sick pigs or unwell pigs don't engage in tail biting behaviour. I suppose they've better things to be thinking of that they're unwell. Um, and it's the thriving pigs that are, that, are, that are doing this. So there's some link between tail biting behaviour and aggressive behaviour. And we think it's associated with high growth rates and high motivation to eat and therefore a lot of competition for access to feed. In one of our studies, the, uh, well, the well pig study, which is looking at the link between antimicrobial resistance or antibiotic use on farms and pig welfare, we've seen that in pigs that have antibiotics in their feed, there's a growth promotory effect of the antibiotics. So they're growing faster than pigs that don't have antibiotics in their feed. And they're also engaging in more aggression and more fighting and more competition for access to the feeder. And this is also causing more tail and ear biting. And in the talk I also talk about the prevalence of some of these lesions across Irish farms. And on some farms we have quite worryingly high levels of ear lesions in growing pigs, especially in the second stage. And very little is known about this behaviour and we're hoping to elucidate some of the mechanisms behind it through across these three projects. And we also have done some work looking at lung lesions in slaughter pigs and we see quite a high prevalence of pleurisy in slaughter pigs. So some of our work through those projects has yielded the first prevalence data on um, lung lesion prevalence in Irish slaughter pigs. So it's useful, it's, it, um, apart from the overall objectives of the project, it's throwing up interesting um, findings in, in other areas as well. My example of where I'm showing that pigs are thriving, all the indicators would suggest they're doing well. Their growth rate is very high, um, th there's no indicators of sickness in their blood or, or anything, but yet they have welfare lesions. So it seems to be that these lesions reflect their mental well-being. It's like the stresses of high growth and competition for access to feed and social stress amongst pigs growing very fast, very tightly packed in, in, a, in a pen, manifests itself in behavioural abnormalities like tail and ear biting and that they seem to be reflecting the pig's mental inability to cope with the, the stresses of high productivity and they spill out into these abnormal performance of these abnormal behaviours. So there, the only real indirect indicator we have of what's going on in, in, the, in the pig's mind, but they are telling us that it's failing to cope with the stressors that, that are associated with you know, high production and high productivity. I suppose the core message I'm trying to get across really is that pig welfare isn't all about pig health and I think that that's what contributes to the difficulty we have in, in, in understanding what welfare is all about and sometimes the two are going in opposite directions so what we think is good health that pig could still have poor welfare um, and I think we have to be cognizant of that and in terms of tackling some of these behavioural problems we need that level of understanding, you know, of all these intricacies in order to find ways of solving these behavioural problems, which are very costly to the industry, as well as being very detrimental to animal welfare.